I will just say about Jim Jordan, you know, um, he has been called by his own party, by John, John Boehner, a political terrorist. He's also been linked to the Ohio State sexual abuse scandal. He's also been linked to the Ohio State sexual abuse scandal. <laughs> The idea that I wouldn't stand up for our athletes if I thought there was some kind of harm happening to them is ridiculous. I've stood up to the, to the FBI, I've stood up to the IRS, I've stood up to Adam Schiff, I've stood up to John Boehner, the Speaker of the House from our own state and our own party. Um, so if I, think there was, if, I, if I thought there was something wrong or if I knew there was something wrong happening, I would have stood up for him. He's also been linked to the Ohio State sexual abuse scandal. I left my daughter when she was 14 months old. Um, in the back of our car. It was a hot July day. My husband left her in the car. I left her in the car. She was fine, but I will tell you, I'm still ashamed about it. I'm embarrassed. I'm horrified. And I can see how someone could do this. I testified in front of Congress about something so simple, cameras in courtrooms. He came in late, he looked disheveled, and he immediately was screaming and yelling and terrorized me and the other experts on the panel. And describing him as a terrorist is exactly that. He's a chaos agent, and it came out of nowhere, and he had no command of the subject that we were talking about, which made it even scarier. So to have him, the thought of him being the Speaker of the House, I think leads to more chaos. Thank he you. came in late. Ms. Huston, five minutes. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, Thank you for inviting me today. I'm especially thrilled to be seated with my good friend, Jeff Tubin. We were colleagues at CNN. And New Yorker suspends Jeffrey Tubin for masturbating on a Zoom call. Fired by the New Yorker, suspended by CNN, he was masturbating during a Zoom call and many of his co-workers saw that. They saw Tubin jerking off. Damn, Jeffrey Tubin? At least Pee Wee Herman was in an X-rated movie theater. I'm just saying. Tubin lowered the camera. The people on the call said they could see Tubin touching his penis. Tubin then left the call. Moments later, he called back in, seemingly unaware of what his colleagues had been able to see. It, what exactly happened? Was it just, you just left open the screen? I, I, you know, I'd rather not go into the, the, the grisly details. The only thing I'll say about it is, I didn't know other people were, were on the Zoom call, were watching. I mean, this was not an intentional act on my part. I, just, I don't really want to go into the details. You know either. what, <laughs> then we agree. <laughs> Jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jack. Spanking it, jacking it, spanking it, smack. He looked disheveled and he immediately was screaming and yelling and terrorized me and the other experts on the panel. I'm Donald, Donald Trump and I'll protect you from the scary black people. I haven't done the research, but I have been told that I am the only network African American journalist with a journalism degree, a law degree. I'm a former federal prosecutor and a member of the Supreme Court Bar. So I am somewhat of a unicorn. Me and the other experts on the panel. Not the most qualified person perhaps to give a perspective, but I do believe I have a unique perspective representing a particular community. The judicial system disproportionately affects the African American community in this country because African Americans are the most incarcerated people in the world. Blacks are 13 percent of the population but commit about 30 percent or so of the hate crimes. Uh, whites at 60 percent of the population commit about 50 percent of the hate crime. So whites are under committing hate crime when you compare it to their percentage of the population while blacks are over committing hate crime. So even though blacks are 13 percent of the population, blacks are killing twice as many uh, whites uh, as whites are killing blacks at 60 percent of the population. Is this thing on? Now that's homicide. African Americans are 5.9 times as likely to be incarcerated than white Americans. If we're talking about race all the time in America, maybe, maybe this should be mentioned. Black on white crime is 42.3 times more uh, uh, prevalent than white on black crime. Sorry, but uh, that is a figure from the Justice Department. African Americans, though no different than most Americans, learn about the intricacies of the criminal justice system through the news media. <laughs> How's that for a badass? Ooh, world star! World star! 
However, African Americans consume more news media than any other group in the U.S. African Americans watch 37% more television than any other demo demographic. They also consume more social media and more streaming. Many of my legal journalist colleagues go to a three-day law school course to prepare them for a career as a legal journalist. I watch as well-intentioned reporters doing the very best they can with networks in a rush to be first, get the law wrong instead of getting it right. Antifa is widely perceived as an African-American organization. When televised, accuracy is a given. Veracity is a given. Charges of fake news easily dismissed. The courtroom camera always gets it right. I'm now yield five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. He looked disheveled and he immediately was screaming and yelling and terrorized me and the other experts on the panel. Appreciate you having this hearing. Mr. Tubin, this morning on national television, you said in talking about the uh, whistleblower complaint relative to the phone conversation the President of the United States had with the President of Ukraine and the President's conduct relative to that country, you said today's Justice Department has been corrupted. Is that an accurate representation of the statement you made? This it sure is. Maybe? Uh, and you were making that relative to the complaint that was filed and that you guys were talking about in the... He looked disheveled and he immediately was screaming and yelling. It was a group discussion on, uh, on the show this morning, is that right? Yep. Okay. Have you read the Department of Justice statement relative to this matter? I have. Can I just read it for the... I might just read it here so we all have it. The President has not spoken with the Attorney General about having Ukraine investigate anything relating to former Vice President Biden or his son. The President has not asked the Attorney General to contact Ukraine on this or any other matter. The Attorney General has not communicated with Ukraine on this or any other subject, nor has the Attorney General discussed this matter or anything relating to Ukraine with Mr. Giuliani. You're familiar with that? I am. And you stand by your statement that I the sure Justice do. Department is, is corrupted, and it's based on what the whistleblower said in the complaint. No, it is not based entirely on that. I just asked you what you were talking about, the whistleblower, and you said it was based on the whistle. You said the Justice Department is corrupted based on what you saw in the complaint. It was based on the... Uh, the uh, whistleblower's complaint, it was based on the partial... It was based on the whistleblower's complaint? In part, and if you let me finish my answer, it is gonna, also based on the uh, further... I'm, I'm going to interject here and... Wolf, um... Oh, to, although these terrific... Uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. It's within my discretion to allow you to continue uh, along this line, and I'm going to do so from, uh, I'm going to allow you to uh, continue, but I just want to caution you that in the future, I'm not going to tolerate this kind of imposition in uh, my subcommittee hearing. All due respect, it's entirely germane. Well, you have no right uh, to the heck demand I don't. that, but I will... The heck I don't. No, you My don't. time, and it was, well, was 3.35, uh, uh, no. and I have every right to ask. The witness actually in his opening statement brought up Ukraine. I didn't. The witness said on national television the very statement I said that he said on TV, and he said he agreed that that was an accurate representation of what he said. He brought up Ukraine in his opening statement. And I'm you gonna, know I have full discretion to ask the kind of questions I'm, I'm I want. Gonna, and I'm I, gonna need, I need I'm, three minutes and 35 seconds I'm, on the clock. I'm going to restore your time. Appreciate and I'm going, it. I'm going to ask you that in the future uh, you respect this the is, integrity. Uh, hold on. I want you to respect the integrity of my subcommittee hearings and not bring in this extraneous uh, Mr. issue. Mr. Would you for a question? Has no, Chairman, you for a question? That is, that is not germane to this This is the Judiciary procedure. Committee. We have a witness testifying in front of the Judiciary Committee who today on national television said the Justice Department is corrupt. If that's not relevant, tell me what is for this committee. No, this hearing is about secrecy in... Uh, that doesn't change the fact that the judicial... witness brought up Ukraine in his opening statement this morning on, this morning on national television said the Justice Mr. Department Joy. is corrupt. Mr. Jordan, if we're going to uh, have a discourse, I'm going to need for you to listen to me just as I'm listening to you. I object 
to you bringing this subject into this hearing because it's not germane, but I'm going to allow you to continue. You, but I'm going to ask that in the future, uh, you limit yourself to this hearing uh, intruding with extraneous materials such as this. And with that, I, I will, will do my you. best, Mr. Chairman. I will thank you, and I'll yield you uh, three minutes and 30 seconds to uh, uh, continue your questioning. Our witness who said this morning the Justice Department is, cr is corrupt on national television, basing that, at least in part, earlier said, basing it on the whistleblower uh, blower complaint. We need to remember a few things about this whistleblower. He had no firsthand knowledge of the phone call. He wasn't on the call. But we do know one thing about this whistleblower, Mr. Tuman. He had a political bias. We learned that from the Inspector General. The Inspector General told us there was indicia of arguable political bias. You know what that is? That's Washington speak for this guy hated Trump. And yet that is the basis for our witness telling us that the Justice Department is, is corrupt. Let me give Wait, you a can I, Would you questions. like an answer? I will in a second. Let me give you a few facts just to give a little context to this. Facts that happened, to the, that happened in the Justice Department prior to Bill Barr taking over the Justice Department. Facts that, things that happened in the Obama Justice Department. You familiar with this, Mr. Tubin? that the Obama Justice Department's FBI spied on two Americans associated with the presidential campaign. You familiar with that? I, you familiar with the fact that the Obama Justice Department's FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation on the Republican Party's presidential candidate and didn't tell the candidate they had an investigation, a counterintelligence investigation open on him? Didn't tell him what was going on? You familiar with the fact that the Obama Justice Department's FBI allowed Peter Strzok and Andy McCabe to run that investigation? Peter Strzok, the guy who said, don't worry, Lisa, we'll stop Trump. Trump should lose 100 million to zero. Andy McCabe, now, this, this is not Jim Jordan talking. This is now the inspector general. The inspector general said Andy McCabe lied three times under oath. The inspector general, Michael Horowitz, said that Peter Strzok should have never been allowed to head up that investigation, not because he had this bias against Clinton or bias against Trump in favor of Clinton, I should say, but because he ran the Clinton investigation. He should have been prohibited from running that. But the Obama Justice Department allowed it to happen. The Obama Justice Department allowed the Clinton campaign paid for document, the dossier, to be used to go to a secret court, Mr. Tubin, to spy on one of the people associated with the Trump campaign. And the former FBI director leaked information through his friend of the New York Times in an effort to get a special counsel, which he was successful in doing. And finally, I would just say this. On January 6th, the Obama Justice Department went to the Trump Tower when it was President-elect Trump. January 6, 2017, they told the president-elect he was not under investigation, all the while trying to set him up as part of their Trump-Russia investigation. And again, not my words. That was in the report released just three and a half weeks ago by the Inspector General Michael Horowitz. And yet today, based on a whistleblower that had no firsthand knowledge, wasn't on the phone call, has a political bias against the president, you're saying this Justice Department is somehow corrupt. Well, I mean, if you want to just talk about the whistle, whistleblower, one of the extraordinary things about the whistleblower was that um, in the whistleblower's report, there is a summary of the phone call between um, the President of the United States and the President uh, of Ukraine. And of course, as you point out, the, um, the, oh, yes. the whistleblower did not have access to the, the partial transcript that we've not seen, but notwithstanding the absence of firsthand access to that, that transcript, the whistleblower summary of that, of that, trans, of, of that phone call was extremely accurate, which suggests a great deal of credibility on the part of the whistleblower, wouldn't you say? How do you know it's, extreme, how do you know it's extremely accurate? Mr. Chairman, are you kidding me? The gentleman, yes, it has expired. The gentleman's time has expired, and let me say that uh, you got a second this, round? it won't be a second round on uh, this line the heck of it inquiry. Won't. No, it won't. And I want the gentleman to know well, that, that the next time the he chairman, comes in, the chairman, I want the gentleman, well, one more, no, no, one more no, no, question I want the gentleman to know that the next time he comes into my subcommittee and disrupts it in this way. How is this disruptive? That we, yeah, it, it, because you're off topic. And so when no, this, if this should happen again, I'm going to be prepared 
uh, through our rules to hold you accountable. And with that, Mr. Chairman, the rules allow me that, to ask Mr. the questions Chairman, I want to ask. The only thing disruptive that, here is your behavior in limiting and interrupting my question. It was my five minutes. You interrupted. I got one more question with, with, that I would appreciate being able to with, ask the witness. With that, the gentleman is no longer recognized, and I will proceed. That's to, how the Democrats are going to. I will proceed to uh, round two of the questions. Uh, and I have a question for Ms. Huston and Mr. Tubin. I have a legal note. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Representative Jim Jordan has denied that he knew about sexual abuse of wrestlers during his years working at Ohio State University. We'll be right back. Jeffrey Tubin, uh, step back a little bit. Give us the big picture right now of what we're, what we're seeing. Trump won. Where was I? Um, uh, 